Hey YouTubers, it's Tony, and today I'm going to talk as fast as I can and explain to you how to get your car out of the park position if your gear shifter is stuck in the park position for whatever reason. Please keep in mind that this process that I'm about to show you is a temporary quick fix that will get you home if you're someplace stranded. This process also pertains to just about any vehicle that you're currently driving that has a gear shifter like so. On most vehicles, guys, you're going to notice on the gear shift cover, there's drive neutral, etc. And then you'll notice a bogus hole or a hole with a type of cover that's not labeled. On some vehicles, guys, that's a straight hole that you can just stick something down in and push. On other vehicles, there's this little tab that you need to take a flathead screwdriver and remove. If you're someplace stranded, guys, what this is, is a gear shift lock release. So if you're someplace stranded, take a key or any shop or object, put your foot on the brake pedal, start your car like you normally do, and you want to push down. And at the same time, you can shift the gears. Please keep in mind that you're going to have to push down in this hole each time you need to shift the gears because notice it will not go back into park or reverse because you need to push this little tab back down to shift the gears. So again, this is a temporary fix until you can have your vehicle analyzed and fixed. Let's talk about a few of the reasons why your vehicle is stuck in park. The most common reason, guys, on this Nissan Altima that I'm working on is a blown fuse. The fuse panel is located on the driver's side next to the driver's door. Just pop the cover off. One of the first fuses that you want to check to make sure that it's working would be the stop lamp or tail light fuse or whatever it's called on your vehicle as it relates to your brake lights. On the Nissan Altima, you also want to check the battery saver fuse. How will you know if the fuse is good, guys? Well, notice that this fuse in the center, it's whole all the way through. There are, there are no black dots or spots, which would indicate that the fuse is blown. If you found that this center part is cracked or missing a piece, that means the fuse is blown. And then you need to replace the fuse accordingly. And then go back and try and start your car and shift it, etc., and you should be good to go. But let's say you checked your fuse and that's not really your problem. The next thing you wanna check guys would be your brake light switch. Your brake light switch is located on your brake pedal and I'll show you that momentarily, but it is responsible for sending a signal from the brake pedal to the gear shift solenoid that says it's okay to shift from park into gear. So let's go down and show you what the brake light switch looks like and why and how will you know that the brake light switch has failed, guys? Your brake lights will not light up. Okay, guys, there's your brake light switch. This black one right here, just like this. You can purchase them at any auto parts store for about $35. You can find them on rockauto.com for about 5 or $6 also. The other switch located next to it is your cruise control switch, just in the event that you need to replace that for whatever reason. To get your brake light switch out, guys, it's really easy. Turn it counterclockwise and pull it out. It has a little electrical connector on it. Push the tab in and you can pull the electrical connector away from the brake light switch. How does your brake light switch work, guys? See this little tab here? When you push on your brakes, this little tab pops out and your brake lights come on. When you release the brakes, they come back and push that little tab in and your brake lights go out. Special note, when replacing your brake light switch, let's see if I can get you a better picture. You want to make sure you put your brake light switch back in exactly the way it came out. So from here to this little round black piece. You want to make sure you mimic your new brake light switch the same way. So you just put it in, turn it clockwise, and it'll lock into place. But you want to make sure that if this is the distance from here 
down to this little black round piece. You want to make sure the new brake light switch has the same amount of distance or it could possibly affect whether your brake lights work correctly or not. Okay, guys, the next reason why your um, gear shifter would be stuck in the park position on your Nissan Altima would be the interlock gear shift module. And that's located, unfortunately, up behind the instrument cluster on your vehicle. I would only fool with this, guys, if you have a licensed mechanic who has diagnosed your vehicle and has told you that you need to replace this. I have another video out there, guys, that shows you how to remove the cluster, etc. It's really easy, just so you know. The next reason for why your vehicle would be stuck in the park position, guys, would be the gear shift solenoid. Unfortunately, it's located beneath the gear shifter in your Nissan Altima and probably the same for just about any vehicle that you're driving with this type of gear shifter. I've seen a number of videos out there where folks will talk about the gear shifter solenoid, but they don't really show you where it is or truly how to take it out if you need to replace it. You can go to the junkyard and get a gear shift solenoid for about $30, guys. I've looked at them online. They go anywhere from $450 to $500 online. If you go to the dealership, it's probably much, much higher. This is what a gear shift solenoid looks like, guys. Okay, this is the same as the gear shifter down there. It's really easy to take apart. And where's the gear shift solenoid, guys? It's on the bottom of the gear shift assembly. And it does not look like it's made to come out, although there are screws on top. I don't see where you, if you removed it, that you could actually reconnect it without cutting the wires. So that's a lot to go through. Um, again, you can go to the junkyard and find these. This little lock here, guys, is what you're pushing down on that releases the lock release, rather. And this is what releases your gear shifter to come out of park. So just keep in mind. What I actually did on this gear shifter that I bought from the junkyard, guys, is I just took a piece of wire, wired it up so that the lock is held in the down position, and then you can shift your car in and out of park as much as you want. But keep in mind, if you choose to do this, because this stuff is expensive, but if you choose to do this, just keep in mind that you can accidentally shift the car from park to drive, um... Or neutral etc without putting your foot on the brake pedal so just be mindful of that how do you get to the gear shift assembly guys well first you need to get a set of door panel tools you can purchase those tools at harbor freight or just about any auto parts store they're designed to go up in the tight spots without damaging things what you do is you just stick it up in a tight spot and pop stuff loose you're going to need to do the same thing here and you can wedge it in any tight spot and just pop it loose. Keep in mind, guys, I'm not going to take this stuff apart, but I am going to tell you how you can take it apart. It's really easy. Just remember that you'll have to move the gear shifter back and forth periodically. Put your brake lever up in the upright position so it's out of your way. You'll just have to move things back and forth. Just, just be mindful of that for the most part. To get this piece out, guys... What you do need to do is turn the handle for the gear shift counterclockwise, and that will come off. I always advise putting a block of wood at the front of the vehicle and a block of wood at the back of the vehicle to make sure it doesn't roll. To get this cover off, notice that it's very difficult to come out with the gear shifter in park. So you want to push down that tab again, release the lock release, shift the gear shifter all the way back as far as you can go, and now you can safely take this part off. You don't need to disassemble or disconnect this part, guys. Just set it to the side. Now what you want to do is push the lock release and shift the gear back to park. This cover on most vehicles, guys, is just a snap-on piece. Just grab it firmly, pull it up. But be mindful when you pull it up, guys. The cord or wire that lights up your gear shifter is connected to it. So be careful because you don't want to rip that by accident. 
So you can just set that to the side. And now we're at the gear shifter, guys. Before you start messing with this, if you decide to do it yourself, take a picture of all this so you know exactly how things go back in order the way you took them out. So quickly, I'm going to run through how to disconnect this. And it's easy, guys. If you take your time, you'll be able to do it. One of the first things you want to do, guys, is there are two screws. I'm going to remove this screw and this Phillips screw. The gear shift assembly is held in by four 10 millimeter bolts. One there, one there, one there, one there. There is an electrical connector right here, guys. Push in the little tab and you can pull the electrical connector loose. Here's your little lock, guys. Remember, that's pushing that piece down in the hole. This is what releases your lock. The gear shift assembly has a wiring harness connected to it here and then one under here. Take a pair of needle nose pliers and squeeze the tab, guys, and then you can pull the wiring harness loose. So with these two screws removed and all four 10 millimeter screws released, the next thing you want to pay attention to, guys, is right here. Inside this plastic piece, there is a bulb, and the plastic piece is a socket. You want to pop that piece off, guys. It just pops right off, and it pops back on just like you took it off. This is the gear shift cable, and this little piece right here holds the gear shift cable in place. Just pop it off, guys. And now you can remove the gear shift cable from its housing. You can remove the old gear shift assembly. Put your new gear shift assembly in its place. And then you can begin the process of putting everything back together. Keep in mind, you'll have to pull this up. You'll have to move the gear shift cable for, I'm sorry, the gear shift assembly forward a few times, etc., until you line everything up. Put everything back together, guys, and for the most part, you're good to go. I apologize that this video was extremely lengthy, but now you understand the reasons of why your vehicle may be stuck in park and as to whether you want to tackle this job yourself or have a professional do it. Um, you also understand how to get your car out of park if you are somewhere stuck and stranded. And remember, it's only a temporary fix. I hope this video really helps you guys. And thanks for watching.